Hello and welcome to the 10th anniversary of the Myers Lokov Gaming Channel. This is a video where I will explore questions sent in by you guys and just general stuff I've encountered while having a YouTube channel. The discussion will be as follows. Myra's videos, best games from the past 10 years, anime manga games, and finally, random stuff. I understand that 99.9% .9 of you don't care about this at all, opting for more Artinelico videos, but hey, I will have enjoyed making this video in the end. Anyways, thank you to all my supporters, even if you've already bailed on this video. Let's get started. Myra's videos. Any questions about my videos in general will fall into this category. So let's see what people have asked. Oh god, it's hard to choose. But I did manage to come up with five favorites. Seeing as it's impossible for me to choose only one of my videos. In no particular order, despite being a load of horse shit, my Parasite Eve parody was that exciting first video, and because of that, I'll always love it. The mixed Wild Arms 2 x Assassin's Creed Black Flag was probably the number one moment of Holy shit, I'm a music genius. Do you see that sync up perfectly? That's so cool. Unfortunately, that video series is not taking off at all, and is more of my little fun time to play around with opening videos and music. My game analysis series. Any video added to that playlist, I will love to death, for the amount of time I spent making them. The Silent Hill one took nearly 40 hours total to make. Lastly, the Thoughts on Music Wild Arms gained a very nice set of appreciation in the Western Music Analysis, which I am very happy for. Obviously, as mentioned before, the game analysis videos take the most time to make and tend to, overall, be the hardest to make. If we exclude those, there are still plenty I remember suffering from. One of those first headaches was the Execute Rig Veda, due to the amount of overlapping lyrics that I made worse for myself by doing syllable by syllable instead of the whole word. Each time something changes in a lyric video like this, it means that I had to create a new image. So on top of the syncing, there were hundreds of individual images. Still going with the lyric videos, as a celebration for being granted 15 minute long videos, I took on doing a video for Execute Hibernation, which is a long, seemingly never ending, countdown about birds and seeds. I can't remember the image count for that one, but it must have been insane. And one last hard video I tend to start and fail is the Let's Plays. I am honestly so sorry for abandoning so many games mid-play. The only reason Dark Souls managed to get finished was because I recorded everything before uploading any videos. That and I didn't have work, family, friends taking up a majority of my time, like it does now. Oh well, what can you do? When I was first given this question to answer, I immediately thought of all the dumb parody things I made. Even though I love my Parasite Eve parody, the Nier parody, they took a lot of goddamn effort to make, as it was all drawn in MS Paint, of all things. Providing all the voices makes it legendarily cringy, especially when there was very little voice editing done. I suppose this one would be added to the cringe list after I finished it, though I have more to be proud of this since I've relearned using RPG Maker and uh, drew the awesome background for the Cosmosphere. There are too many to count when I remember the effort I put into them, only to be rewarded with pitiful viewings. But hey, loads of my videos don't get much in the way of views, and this whole channel is more of a side hobby. Videos that stand out range from any of the new series I've tried to push to make a name for myself beyond just the uh, Art and Elica videos. Most of the Game Light and Top 10 video series often gain modest view counts despite having lots to do to make them, including research and editing. That is my biggest nemesis. Editing? I have always underestimated how long it takes to edit shit. But I like it. I do this for fun, not for profit. Alright, enough about my videos. Let's move on. So for those of you who haven't clued in yet, I've been on YouTube for 10 years, with my Parasite Eve parody being posted on the 16th of January 2009. 
For this, I've been asked about my personal favorite games for each year that my channel has been churning out videos, going from 2009 and working my way through till now. We will start with an easy pick for 2009. In January of 2009, Artanelico 2, Melody of Melophalica, was released. I mean, come on, this was an easy pick for those of you who follow this channel. Plus, I have a tattoo on my right ankle dedicated to the game. Another super easy choice for 2010, Nier. And let me specify in that I like the Nier Gestalt version, where you control the father of Yona, the main girl that is the focus of a long rescue mission. In Japan, they have Nier Replicant version, where you're Yona's older brother, because Japan has an obsession of, with siblingness. I just think the game holds a stronger connection with a father looking for his daughter. To me, the father setup feels more urgent and realistic. September 2011, another great game and easy decision, Dark Souls. It should be known that I love Dark Souls. Having enough balls to do a playthrough of it on my channel, when it's known that hardcore fans get a little critical about style and tactics. In March 2012, on my birthday nonetheless, Another Tales title dropped into existence, Tales of Graces F. Now this was a difficult one to determine, I both enjoyed the game, seeing as it was the last game I played with my brother before I moved country, but I also hated the main character for his lack of decision making and how he practically bumbles around for the whole game, and everything ends up fine for him despite that. I highlighted my frustration in my top 10 most annoying characters in video games. As Bell sits at number 2 on the list, if anyone is interested in going and checking it out just for that part. Despite that, the overall gameplay and the story was pretty alright. Moving on to my pick for 2013, June 2013, Animal Crossing New Leaf. Having not played an Animal Crossing since the original on GameCube, and even then it was a friend's console, not mine, I was overjoyed at having a game to waste time while I was commuting to work or just needed some downtime. March 2014, Dark Souls 2. Yes, I understand that Arno Surge and Drakengard 3 came out the same year, but if I'm perfectly honest, I have yet to finish those two games. But with Dark Souls 2, I've played it a few times, even though I think it's the worst one. I'm a Souls fan through and through. Which brings me to March 2015, Bloodborne, and April 2016, Dark Souls 3. What can I say? They're fucking great games, and everyone should go and play them right now. Going on to March 2017, Near Automata. When they announced a sequel to Nier, the cult hit game that I had the honor of playing, I was shocked. I wish I could go back and record my reaction to the first E3 trailer when that happened. While technically a sequel, people who have played the game know that it has very little to do with the first game if you look at the big picture. Even so, there is enough for old fans like me to appreciate the nods to the original. It helped that the combat had vastly improved and the graphics were ace. And finally, in June 2018, Octopath Traveler. I absolutely adore this game for its retro gameplay and absolutely amazing soundtrack that accompanied it. I've mentioned the music in two different videos on my channel, that's how wowed I am by it. While I admit the story of Octopath is a bit stale, it reminds me of a favorite classic that I played when I was younger, Romancing Saga 3. It had a similar 8 character main setup with a staggered storyline to follow. Octopath which is so crisp and clean, it was everything someone like me would ask for in a game. Phew, that was a lot of game talk. Moving on to anime, manga, and, well, more game talk, I suppose. So you want to know my tastes in anime. It should come as no surprise that I like anime with deep plot stories, or at least something with depth. Anything with a dark twist definitely hooks me right away. Shin Sekai Yori, also known as From the New World, is one of those deep story, dark twist ones. But it doesn't always have to be that way. Descending Stories, also known as Showa Genroku Rakugo Shinju, has a brilliant story that shows the process of Rakugo, a type of Japanese entertainment where one person tells an entire story, often playing all the characters in their story and giving them unique voices. The first episode of the anime has an entire Rakugo routine. It was incredible. Another series of anime that I love to bits is Crest of the Stars and the subsequent seasons called Banner of the Stars. It's a sci-fi space opera, and although it doesn't have a perfect story and can get bogged down with dumb military crap that you haven't a clue what they're on about, the world the author created is amazing. One that has its own languages and whatnot. But damn, the two main characters have so many struggles with one another, it's great. 
I highly recommend it if you're into a slower-paced space drama that builds on characters in the world than showing flashy action scenes. Unlike my anime tastes, my manga taste often leans more towards comedy rather than serious stuff, although I still dip into that every now and again. My favorite manga so far is Delicious in Dungeon, also known as Dungeon Meshi. It's a fantasy dungeon crawler where the main cast eat the monsters that they slay as they go deeper. The amazing amount of creativity from the author is something you have to admire. There's also the characters who are all pretty weird. Nishijo is an amazing manga and thankfully it isn't a billion volumes long. It's a nice 10 volume set that you can go back on and read them and still laugh. As for the more serious manga, I'm going through The Promised Neverland, Made in Abyss, To the Abandoned Sacred Beasts, Uzumaki, and the various Devilman remakes and spin-offs. You should all know this by now, but my specialty is in JRPGs, though I have a soft spot for survival horror as well. And of course, with the Game Light series, I love finding games that most people respond with, what the fuck is that? My absolute favorite game of all time has to be Seiken Densetsu 3 or Secret of Mana 2 outside of Japan, despite not ever being released outside of there. While there are better stories in games like Chrono Trigger, this was my game. The survival horror gaming love came much later as I was a wuss as a kid and got scared from so many games when my older brother played them. I remember having nightmares about the Resident Evil 2 liquor part when it moves along the ceiling. Despite the initial setbacks, I dove into the deep end and played Fear by myself in the dark and finished it around 2 in the morning when I was a teenager. Then I was free to do all the games I wanted. Other games that obviously influenced me greatly are the Archanelica games and Near Gestalt and Automata, seeing as I have tattoos of them. Makes sense here. Of course, I have to mention the Soul series and Bloodborne because they're so fucking amazing, and I've spent many hours on them. Many. But they aren't the games I spent the most time on. The amount of hours I've spent on other games is ridiculous. The Sims 3 has 380 hours, Persona 5 has under 180 hours, Monster Hunter World has 120 hours on record, and I've only got Monhun a month and a bit ago. So sad. I hope that gave you a look into my life of anime, manga, and games. I could go on and on about them for ages. Maybe I'll do a Discord chat and invite people just to talk about it. Who knows? <laughs> He, she's back! Are you a little boy or a female with a boyish voice? A man with superior taste here. Uh... You would think with a username called Myers Lokov, it would be obvious. Oh well. Welcome to the random stuff that has nothing to do with the past few discussions. Here are the questions. Spite! No, seriously. It was just because... I kept seeing those top 10 RPG songs videos, and all they contained were Final Fantasy VII stuff. So I decided that my opinion was better and made a bunch of top 10 RPG music stuff to insert what I thought was good. Pretty pathetic, I know, but at least I'm being honest. It evolved into my opinions to, hey, let's spread the love of some unknown games. Artanelico became one of those main targets, and that's when I realized there was a lack of love and videos with lyrics to the songs. Then it expanded to me finally speaking in videos with the Game Light episodes with a shitty-ass microphone. Then, like everyone, I got older and had money to improve my videos. That's when the microphone and video editing software was purchased and I could make videos up to my standard. I hate sloppy videos. So I apologize for the crappy quality of the early Game Lights. I'm a librarian at a school. Not much else to explain there, really. I have too many hobbies for the amount of free time I have. Not only that, they're always expensive as fuck. Gaming is expensive, but do you know what else is? Tabletop gaming! More specifically, Warhammer. For those who don't know what Warhammer is, it's a tabletop game where you build, paint, and play with armies against other people. It's all about dice, stats, measuring, and so on. Warhammer is divided into Fantasy, Age of Sigmar, and Sci-Fi, 40k. And I'm currently focused on the 40k side of things, but I plan to get into Fantasy once... Once I get more money and have more time. Those who know the game, my armies are as follows. Orcs, my main focus, Sisters of Battle, and Custodians, and Tau. Seriously lacking as my paint scheme is arduous. 
Aside from Warhammer, I draw and doodle loads, mainly for students at work. I take three words that they submit in a box, put them out, and draw whatever they tell me to. It makes for some really creepy shit. And of course, I love to read. I have so many books, and lots to read all the time, but with my other hobbies that take a lot of time, my backlog keeps expanding. This little dinosaur circle thing? I made it in MS Paint one day and thought it was cute, so I just made it my logo. Plus, with it being round, it fits with the uh, YouTube's interface well. Why it has metal spikes? Who the fuck knows? I was just doodling something random one day and went with it. Why is it round? <laughs> Again, no clue. I'm sure there are many other random questions, so please let me know in the comment section or message me or put it on my Facebook page. I'll answer anything. I hope you enjoyed this lame-ass video that I made. If people who don't know about Artanelico are watching, this whole setup probably doesn't make much sense to you. Just think of it as an inner mind garden that represents me. I like beer if you didn't notice. Thank you for your continued support on my channel, even though my release schedule is all over the place. You are honestly the best bunch of fans, your patience surpasses anything I could ever muster.